Hey guys, this is Billy from adultcello.com and a few weeks ago I mentioned that my article had come out um, in Strad Magazine, September 2023, and I recently, it, it made its way across the pond to Los Angeles, so I finally got my, my own issue, and I just wanted to share that with you guys and talk about the article a little bit. So that's not me, obviously, but this is my article right here. So to summarize, in this article, I basically offer up the idea that for adult learners, I think we need to reimagine the repertoire, find ways to make real repertoire, like the Bach Prelude and you know, maybe parts of the Dvorak Concerto, these pieces that drew us to learn to play the cello in the first place. We need to start learning them earlier on than, than would be standard, okay? Now, that, that would be a recipe for disaster if I don't also add that the way to do that is by deconstructing the piece in question so that it becomes manageable for whatever stage you are in, in your cello journey, okay? This article, I was reflecting on my own journey. About two months in, I started playing the Bach Prelude. I begged my teacher, she relented, and I started. And I remember this mixture of feelings when I started it I felt like almost like I was breaking rules because who am I? Like I've been playing a couple months. What am I doing? But you know, she thought I had made, I was making rapid progress. Like why? You know, why not? There's no harm. And then I was also super excited. And then during while learning it, I was, I really felt like I was making a lot of progress because I was just pouring so much effort, blood, sweat, and tears into learning this piece. Looking back now, from with hindsight, I left so much development on the table. But what I retained was this, the wonderful motivation I got from practicing it. And so I, this article is my way of solving like how to have your cake and eat it too, basically. Like work on the pieces that inspired you to play cello, but not feel overwhelmed or like get to a point where you're actually stagnating your journey because the music's just too hard. So one of the headings in my article is eat your vegetables. And what I mean by that is I wanna be clear that I'm not saying that adult learners aren't gonna take their journey seriously and so they can basically just skip steps and do whatever they want. That's absolutely the opposite of what I'm saying. But when we look at the typical track that, that people get put on, you know, like this repertoire leads to this repertoire, blah, 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 usually that's designed for children. And I think there's a major issue there that can happen with adult learners. It happened with me. I remember I'd been playing for a couple months and at that point I was already completely obsessed with becoming a cellist. Even though I'd only been playing a few months, I was just completely crazy about it. And I just got to this new etude called I've Got Homework. And I just remember, I think my face said it clearly because my teacher was like, don't worry, it's not gonna always be like this. But it just, I was just so kind of tired of childish pieces when I feel so like mature as a human and, and my emotional maturity is developed. I'm 25. I'm like, I'm ready to like make music. I, unfortunately, I just can't play this instrument yet. But it's like, I, I don't want to play children's pieces for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I mean, this makes perfect sense because for, when you think about children, usually they are starting an instrument because their parents started them and hopefully they learn to love music. But it's not going to bother them if they're playing pieces and pieces during their childhood that don't have a lot of musical depth. I mean, they're laying a technical foundation. For adults, I think while that like longer, more thorough path is a good idea, it, it, it's not a realistic one. A lot of adults have limited time and they also have a certain amount of like enthusiasm to play real music and make real beautiful sounds. And that can get sapped from one childish piece after the next for month, months and months. So that's one of the benefits of starting to kind of reimagine the repertoire. And for example, most people, one of their bucket list pieces is going to be the Bach Prelude in G major. Allowing an adult in to work on it in a deconstructed form, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, that is going to be so beneficial for an adult because suddenly the music they're working on, even though it'll be like pulled apart and slowed down and, and made accessible, you know what you're playing. It's still the Bach prelude. And so there's this depth of emotion and your own personal investment to really make a beautiful sound on every note because you're not just playing an etude that's gonna to lead to another etude that gets you through book one and then you get to book two and you know, you're just like kind of waiting for a piece to come along that really inspires you. 
you're, you're working on Bach. So you're going to have that investment right from the start. In a minute here, I'm going to demonstrate, um, I have some musical examples in my article of how I would teach the Bach prelude to an adult learner who, for whom the prelude is a little bit advanced, but this is how I would deconstruct it to make it completely accessible. Before I do that, let me just talk about the kind of mindset that you want to take when you do this kind of you know, bucket list repertoire. First off, let me just say, in my opinion, you absolutely do not have to play an entire piece, okay? That's kind of a crucial aspect of this entire, you know, idea that I offer in this article. I'm not saying you should play the Dvorak Concerto. I'm saying maybe try to learn the theme two from the first movement, that beautiful theme, okay? So that that's like 30 bars, you know, 16 bars of music, something like that not the entire concerto, okay? And I don't think there's anything wrong with splicing out some of the, you know, most accessible, most beautiful, like, moments of a bigger work that otherwise is, you know, maybe completely out of reach at the moment, okay? And the second thing I would say is that, okay, I'm just gonna be like a painter right now, okay? <laughs> and what I, I'm like a house painter, and what I'm gonna do is put on a primer coat Okay, so that's the, the undercoat before you put on the real color. So this is just a primer coat, and I'm going to get it on, and then I'm going to go ahead, you have to let it dry. So maybe it'll let, I'll let it dry for several months, okay? So this, in other words, this isn't my one chance to learn this piece. If you go into it thinking that, like, okay, I'm, you know, it's just going to be a checklist, I'm going to learn this piece, then this piece, then this piece, it can get, it can feel like a lot of pressure, and it can feel very discouraging because how you might sound playing that piece, maybe you're learning tremendously and everything's going great, but you don't sound like the recordings of the piece that you love. You know, surprise, surprise, you've only been playing, you know, a number of months. So it's, it's important to think that, okay, I'm gonna do a first pass on the Bach prelude, okay? And maybe just on the first four bars of the Bach prelude, totally acceptable. A final mindset thing that I would mention that I thought was really, it would be really important to think about is that if you do it, you know, pick repertoire in this way so that you're excited about the actual pieces you're playing, it can help you basically get your butt into the chair <laughs> when you've got a really busy adult day and you've only got 15 to 30 minutes of practice time. And if it's, you know, you're going to sit down and work on just some etude that you got assigned, it's easy, especially if it's 15 minutes, it's easy to be like, you know, I'll just wait till a day I have more time. And then if you're a busy person, that could be several days in a row, and then suddenly you haven't played your cello in, in a week, okay? Whereas if you're working on a bucket list piece, there's a good chance that like, oh, 15 minutes, let me just, let me just go play those first, like work on those first couple bars again. You know, it's, it, it's an, an attracting force and it's gonna make you want to sit down and, and find those little pockets of time, and those little pockets add up over the years. So the Bach prelude, as played at like a, a normal speed, usually we slur the first three sixteenth notes, and then you play the next five separate, so... <laughs> etc. Okay, now, <laughs> if you're early on in your journey, what I suggest doing is, first thing we do is take every 16th note and make it a quarter note, okay? And then we're gonna put the metronome on a, what's gonna feel like an incredibly slow tempo, and we're just gonna turn this into a, like a factory conveyor belt of beautiful, rich, open, ringing notes, okay? So what I did, you put the metronome on 40, okay, for each quarter note. And then just rich, use, you know, plenty of bow. You don't have to use a full bow, but you want to use plenty of bow and really open each note like this. Okay, so that's just the first eight notes of the piece, um, but you would just continue in that manner. Okay, once that's comfortable with at, at 40 beats per minute, you can go ahead and crank it up maybe five beats per minute at a time. And eventually you would get to about double the speed, which would be 80. Okay, 
And then we're still pulling, you know, single, single bow per note. Ready, and... What I would advocate for is as things speed up, instead of thinking like, okay, I'm gonna kind of like lighten my arms up. That's what I used to do is it's like, things are getting faster, let me lighten up. I still am just sinking in, pulling a beautiful U-shaped bow stroke. And what I'm doing, I'm just using less bow. And so the notes happen more quickly, okay? But the feeling of engaging the string should be the same, okay? Now, once that's comfortable, and you can go to 80, you can obviously go faster than that if that's comfortable. Then what I would do is I would go back and you can work on the same first eight notes <laughs> and you can do it two, bow, uh, two notes per bow, okay? At, and because it's, you're now slurring two notes, I would start not at 40, but actually 55. Okay, so now this is what it would sound like slurring two notes at a time. Okay, and then that was 55, and then you could work that up to about 80. So, yes, this doesn't sound exactly like the full speed version I played, but you know what's interesting? What it kind of sounds like, especially when you have the metronome at 40 and you're doing separate bows. <laughs> okay, so we've taken the Bach Prelude as, as complicated as that is, and you know, it's a, a complete, legitimate, real piece of repertoire, and we've deconstructed it in a way that it's actually somewhat comparable to Twinkle Twinkle in the opening bars, okay? That's the beauty of deconstruction. So it gives you a chance to really build a beautiful sound, and then, you know, at least separate bows, it's completely manageable and, and accessible, and otherwise it might take I don't know, months or maybe even years before you feel like, when am I worthy to try this? And it, it's just so much more fun to just dive in. So there you go. Um, I hope this gives you some food for thought. And it, just one more time, I grant you, <laughs> you have my complete permission to, you know, work on bucket list repertoire in a deconstructed way. It's, it's so, so motivating to do so, okay? Please, please do me a favor pick up a copy of the Strad um, article that I, that I wrote uh, to read about it in you know, detail. And there's a link in the description below for that. Um, thank you so much, and I will see you next week.